Welcome to NTN Nightly. I'm Hermedy Mark. This edition's top stories. The St. Lucia Consulate in Martinique to host an investment forum for French investors. The Blachat Combined School benefits from the Goodwill Ambassador Program. And Health Minister, Senator Honorable Mary Isaac lauds the public for sustained low COVID-19 cases. The St. Lucia Consulate in Martinique is preparing to host an investment forum for French investors. This first ever virtual investment forum will focus on presenters from St. Lucia who will speak on various and potential sectors of investment on the island. How to do business in St. Lucia, potential partnerships with export-ready companies, as well as discussions on the existing options for merchandise and free transportation between the two islands. Consul General Joanna Sultan says this is all in an effort to stimulate economic growth and development between Martinique and St. Lucia. The forum is scheduled for Wednesday, 28th April 2021. We are doing it in conjunction with the Chamber of Commerce here in Martinique. Um, they are partnering with us. As a matter of fact, they are hosting a one month long um, trade show on um, the Caribbean, America, Africa. And of course, um, I jumped in and um, I decided, OK, let us um, speak a little, bit, a little bit about investment opportunities in St. Lucia, especially now as we're looking for ways to re-stimulate the economy because we all know what COVID has done. And so this investment forum really is a way of presenting investment opportunities to those out there, not only in the French territories, but I think the wider region, because being the fact that it's virtual, it means that it is open to any and everybody. The forum is a part of a month-long trade show hosted by the Chamber of Commerce in Martinique from the 6th to the 29th of April 2021 and will focus on the Caribbean, Europe, North America and Africa where entrepreneurs as well as investors and business persons can discover promising markets, benefit from expert advice, expand their business network and identify support mechanisms to develop their international presence at a lower risk. We have Ms. Alana Lansico from Invest in Lucia, who would be speaking about the various investment opportunities um, that um, are possible in St. Lucia. We also have a representative from the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labour. And of course, they are going to be focusing on renewable energy. We in Martinique have gotten quite a few. Um, we have quite a bit of interest in renewable energy, people wanting to set up companies in St. Lucia. The event is 100% digital and numerous conferences and workshops have been planned with simultaneous translation in English and French. St. Lucia's Goodwill Ambassador Program continues to yield benefits on several levels. As school resumed this week, students of the Blushak Combined School were greeted by an eye-catching mural of the solar system thanks to a project spearheaded by the charity organization of Goodwill Ambassador Her Excellency Claudia Edward Ladner. Jessie Leo spoke to her and filed this report. Outdoor learning is increasingly becoming a preferred solution for many schools that have reopened their compounds during the pandemic. Charity organization Edward for Education responded favorably to a request of the Blanchard Combined School principal who wanted to achieve just that. Her vision included appealing murals and other paintings on outside spaces of the school that would cater to the educational needs of the students while adhering to COVID-19 protocols. Edward for Education's decade-long streak of auspicious interventions at schools island-wide would continue now during the pandemic. National Goodwill Ambassador and founder of the charity is Her Excellency Claudia Edward Lardner. Well, we had a lot of um, proposals for school projects and we were thinking with um, COVID-19 and um, the social distancing, some of these projects did not it did not make sense for us to approach them at this time. Mm -hmm. When we got the call from the, from the Blusha Combined School, the principal, she said to us, we have a proposal that will enable our kids to learn on the outside of the classroom, which works perfectly with the social distancing and all of that. Getting this project together was by far one of the easiest projects I've put nice. together and in a timely fashion as well. Most prominent among the artwork created at the Blanchard Combined School is the Solar System Mural for Science Lessons. 
Naja Simeon of Saki Productions, most noted for the St. Lucia mural at Point Seraphin, painted this solar system mural free of charge. I selected this huge wall. You walk up the stairs, you get this wall, so it's like you're walking into the universe. Space. Right. Yes. <laughs> and Earth is right there in the middle, and when you see the image, you see the sun is in the center and it's actually painted on top of a light fixture. So when the light Beautiful. comes on, the sun glows. Everything lights so up. It's, mm. it's, it's just a, a beautiful concept, but I wanted the children to walk into the solar system. And now they can look at, you know, not just the Earth, but the entire universe and beyond. After weeks of planning with Edward for Education, sponsors Saki Productions and Harris Paints, Principal Murrell Emanuel was most satisfied with the final product, completed in time to welcome her students back to school for the third term. Quickly, um, everyone loves it. We are very excited, the students are very excited when they came in on Monday morning and saw this mural on the wall for the first time. They were very, very excited. Parents are very pleased to, to see those kinds of things happening at the school. So on behalf of the Blusha Community family, I want to thank Edward for Education, Static Production, and Harris Pains for helping us see this project to fruition. Other projects of the Edward for Education charity over the years include construction of a sick bay for the Corinth Secondary School, theater arts room for the Cicero Secondary School, and learning center for the Ave Maria Girls Primary School. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. The government of St. Lucia is promoting the development of affordable and clean renewable energy alternatives, an action which will aid in meeting sustainable development goal number seven. During the budget presentation, Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney announced a number of measures to be implemented as part of the national strategy aimed at reducing fossil fuel dependence and improving St. Lucia's overall competitiveness in the energy sector. In this regard, I am pleased to inform honorable members that LUSLEC has secured the resources from Abu Dhabi Fund for Development to allow the installation of a 10 megawatt solar farm with 6 megawatt battery storage in the Trumase Mikud area. Also during this financial year, Mr. Speaker, an allocation has been made for the installation of at least 100 kilowatt or solar PV systems and 10 schools across the island. As part of efforts to promote energy efficiency, the Prime Minister says audits will be conducted at 40 schools and lighting retrofits of over 6,700 fluorescent lights will be changed to LED in selected schools. A similar exercise will be undertaken with respect to our street lights, most of which will be replaced with LED lights, thereby resulting in further energy savings. Mr. Speaker, to assist with the maintenance of our PV systems, the government has embarked on a program to train and certify a number of PV installers and inspectors so as to support and encourage the use of this form of renewable energy. Honorable Alan Chastney says consultation will also begin on a proposal for the introduction of energy efficiency legislation which will provide guidelines and promote efficient energy utilization. Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator Honorable Mary Isaac says the recent drop in the number of COVID-19 cases is attributable to an increase in resources provided by government. The dedication of healthcare workers and importantly, the collective response to the protocols by the public. Over the last few weeks, we have seen a steady decline in our number of new COVID-19 cases since the upsurge we saw in January and February. This is due to your support to the efforts of the Ministry of Health and Wellness and the Government of St. Lucia by observing the protocols, washing our hands, wearing our masks and social distancing. The road to get here has not been an easy one. The command center, the Ministry of Health and the Government of St. Lucia had to make some tough decisions in putting strict protocols in place, especially a stricter curfew over the recent Easter weekend. We know that by our very nature, we are a sociable people, and that sacrifice over Easter was not an easy one. It has now been just over 14 days since the Easter period, and based on the observed declining trend in the number of new COVID-19 cases, 
The actions we took at that time to limit the spread of COVID-19 is paying off for our country. Honorable Mary Isaac is urging the public to continue to adhere to the protocols and keep the nation safe. Our goal is to get our nation's active COVID-19 cases to under 50, and we know we can decrease it even further with your help. This will allow us to reopen more sectors that have been affected by the implementation of the needed public health measures. As a government, we continue to monitor the COVID-19 situation and look forward to the steady drop in the number of new and active COVID-19 cases. We must thank the public for their great sacrifice that contributes to the success in the management of this pandemic. Thank you for practicing the protocols and helping to keep all of us safe. A book highlighting the history of dance in St. Lucia has been launched. Performer, choreographer, fashion designer Christine Samuels has added to her list of achievements by capturing the endeavors of the local dance fraternity. Details in this report. Decades of documentation have enabled performer and choreographer Christine Samuels to compile a book titled Dance Footprints, 40 Years of Dance in St. Lucia this month. The coffee table book, oversized and hard-covered, is intended to not only inform and entertain, but to also inspire some conversation about the movers and shakers of the art form. It, the book is made up of bios and photographs in color, black and white. So it will give you the whole story from where the dancer started and the group started and will give you the photographs to show who these people are and what they have done in the development of dance in St. Lucia. There have been a lot of people who have helped in the development of dance in St. Lucia. The generation today do not know these people and I felt it was necessary for all the generation of people now and the dancers that are going to be bringing dance forward to the next generation needed to know who these people were. Samuels' own career as a dancer spans over 40 years and she established and managed her own dance institution, the Crystallites Dance Academy, as a premier institution for arts education in St. Lucia. During this period, she says she hoarded dance paraphernalia, which later allowed her to spearhead an exhibition commissioned by the Cultural Development Foundation. The book, she says, evolved from this event. What really brought it out was when Auntie Virgie died. Virginia Alexander passed away, and CDF did the Icon series on dance in St. Lucia, and they asked me to put an exhibition together for her and just to document dance. And for me, that was, the, that was the right opportunity. So what I did, I did the exhibition at the Blue Coral Mall in bios and photographs. So basically, when the exhibition was, was done, I transformed the exhibition into the book. The cover features a poignant image of the author in dancer's pose with cultural and dance icon Virginia Albert, shortly before her passing in 2008. The few months of um, when Virtue was very ill, um, it, we had decided to go to a studio to do that photograph. And we put a, a collection of photographs together. And I mean, last night I was writing my speech and I'm saying, wow, this, this is really a magnificent photo because it, it capsulated everything that Virgie and uh, Virgie has put together for Dance in St. Lucia. And I felt it was very fitting since the book is in memory of her and, and She's, a, she's the mother of dance in St. Lucia, so hence the reason that this book, the, the cover of the book, puts Virgie and I, you know, on Dance Footprints. The virtual launch for Dance Footprints, 40 Years of Dance in St. Lucia, was held on Saturday, 10th April, 2021. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquiole.
mommy took me to the dentist. Really? How was that? It wasn't bad. The dentist was really nice and she told me that mouth rinsing is very important for healthy teeth. How so? Rinsing with water gets rid of food in between your teeth which can protect you from getting cavities. No way! So after I eat or drink anything, it's a good idea to rinse out my mouth with water. Yes! Make sure to spit out the water after rinsing because swallowing will only bring the germs into your body. Remember! Water is an easy and cost-effective way to instantly boost your health and a healthy body to fight many diseases including COVID-19. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Coyol. Monsieur Ta, Homa, Monsieur Madame, Debatma, Kenny responsibility for information and government set lacy, that's a GIS, as some of the television national pay NTN, Capuzato Nouvelle a Creole, Presato Primus Hutchinson. You are poor as examination pour te déterminer si le développement cabot qu'a fait à ce placement côté, c'était le cimetière, le premier set de ce monde dans cette ici, là c'est ici, à Rawak là, j'ai montré le travail ça là, ça continue. Construction, le développement cabot qu'a fait à ce Mount Hadi. Situation là, qui n'est pas fait, et puis le cimetière côté, c'est à Rawak là, c'est un qui a une cause à l'eau, attention, à ce le média dans cette ici, côté particulièrement, les officiers National Trust, quand vous trouvez qu'ils sont très concernés, qu'ils développent ça là, qu'ils fait à ce qu'ils place qui sacré. Quand vous avez une recommandation National Trust, à cette fois-ci, de engager un de plus haut et plus spectacle docteur des archéologues, ça c'est docteur Reginald Murphy, pour conduire une investigation concernant ce métier ça là, et à quelle façon le développement peut affecter. Selon docteur Murphy, la situation, c'est qu'il y a un côté qui a découvert que la panne a assez de preuves qui a montré un lien remarquable et qui compte le développement de ça. Et c'est là que c'est un lien qui a les autorités qui sont responsables pour le développement de cette ici. Ça, c'est d'ici hier. Il a demandé pour faire avant de faire sa baie carbone permission pour faire pièce de travail à ce propriétaire de ça. La société des affaires archéologiques et l'histoire de cette ici est aussi une conscience et aussi consulter et puis d'ici là pour te préparer leur thème de référence à ce étude là président société ça là à cette ci docteur Winston Fulgence confirmé qui étude là pas trouvé un lien qui en faute et qui a posé danger en pièce façon question pour docteur Murphy c'est tes en opinion qu'on est grec est-ce que information qui est trouvée qui a affecté la continuation du travail à ce développement cabot. Selon la réponse de Dr. Murphy, la panne est une pièce de façon qui a montré qu'il y a une pièce d'affectement pour le travail de la fête. Gagne cabot, bienvenue à vous pour vous continuer le travail et vous pour le développement cabot à cette liste. Christine Thompson a déclaré que vous avez une plus importante recommandation à vous c'est pour l'année de docteur des affaires archéologiques pour présent par le travail qu'a fait et qui les, les officiers qui ont coopéré pour et puis société là pour faciliter ça et pour établir un gain avec un grand signe de l'honneur à même les was arawak qui tire à sou tire ça là chef officier éducation à département éducation c'est le ci docteur Fiona Philip Meyer en adresse lui pour l'école PIA qui vit recommencer l'opération lundi le 12 avril 2021, déclaré que malgré la tenue en pile à part un, qui était très concerné que l'école qui a vu ouvert et qui a tenu chair chat concerné les maladies de corona et que quelques précautions qui s'y posaient à place, il a ajouté que là aussi ni à l'eau par un qui bienvenu initiative ça là. Docteur Maya fait comprendre que plusieurs par un jadis vous avez senti un grand soulagement comme l'école j'avais ouvert parce que ça a l'occasion les étudiants pour trouver une première façon en étudier. 
Ce que nous voulons dire tout le parent, actuellement, nous voulons remercier tous ces teachers qui ont supporté ce moment-là, qui fait tout le bagage de paix pour que les gens viennent, ils viennent dans des situations, ils savent ça c'est place, ça c'est l'école. Plusieurs personnes font différents bagages pour faire ce moment-là bienvenu en disant que c'est l'école. Ce nous voulons remercier pour ça. Nous voulons dire aussi pour tout le parent, nous, avec santé, avec le ministre de santé, qui a toujours gardé différentes situations. Ce n'est pas pour dire que nous ne jamais joué un cas de COVID dans l'école. Il est impossible, avec même quand nous sommes en um, société, il est fait. Mais c'est comment nous avons gardé pour la situation, nous avons, comment nous avons managé. Avec nous voulons dire tout le parent, nous ça essayer, nous allons continuer à essayer pour manager avec le département de santé. Le ministre de la Santé, Honorable Mary Isaac, dit qu'il est remerciable pour le membre public, ça c'est le membre public à cette ci pour que nous ayons coopéré pour aider à manager la peste malade du corona. Le ministre Isaac dit que pour ces semaines qui passent, le pays a eu manière de l'immoire maladie de continuer à prendre un descendant depuis après ce cas là de prendre un mouton en mois de janvier pour février. Le ministre de la Santé a fait comprendre que ça se passe que le public là, le ministère de la Santé et le gouvernement s'est ici. Des gros pour à façon de observer ce protocole là, qu'à la ville en main, qu'à servir masse à suffisance, qu'à tenir six pieds de distance à parmi l'autre. Selon le ministre Isaac, la route là est longue et très difficile et ni le ministère de la Santé et le gouvernement tenu pour prendre deux ou trois décisions qui étaient bien rides, particulièrement que fiu du moins saison pas là parce que nous finissons ma semaine là et qui savent que ça va être à l'aise pièce de gouvernement mais c'était un sacrifice qui était nécessaire et le ministre de la santé a qu'à quoi qui initiative là travaille assez bien comme nous qu'a ouais les mots cas maladie japon en descendant d'accord mais ça Isaac a ajouté que ça c'est un peu le couragement et qu'il a fait un appel pour le public là continuer travail et puis yo pour vivre placer pays à d'ailleurs des gré et position qui est normale à la vie sociale et économique. Nou. Ça a vraiment fait possible pour plusieurs secteurs qui se trouvés affectés par l'implémentation de ce protocole pour vivre à soupir encore. On a Isaac dit qu'on y a un gouvernement qui a continué pour veiller la situation ça là et qui a un espoir que la situation maladie corona a continué pour être descendre. Et ce que nous avons une nouvelle, monsieur, madame, je vous remercie autant. Pour qu'à garder, je vais avoir une invitation pour jouer depuis moi encore. Si Dieu conserve la vie, je vais poser une autre nouvelle à Kweol. Je vais souhaiter à tous ceux qui ont gardé un bon finissement de semaine. Et ça, c'est le mon vieux présenteur. Au revoir. Merci, Appeal Primus. That brings us to the end of NDN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the Government of St. Lucia Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Humadi Mark.